Good evening and welcome to my home. Let's start out with a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you for your love and your mercy and grace. And I thank you that you are ever drawing us closer to you every day. That your desire is that we learn how to walk with you and that our relationship with you deepen and, and become the most important thing in our life. Just thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome. We're go I'm going to start um, the last two, I think, um, messages in this series about our Heavenly Bridegroom and the Wedding Supper of the Lamb. And um, tonight we're going to be talking about husbands. And um, in the Bible, there is a pattern for everything that we will ever face in this life. God has provided for each one of us a holy reference of how to walk, what to hold on to, what to let go of, what to look for, what to listen to, and how to shut things out that are not beneficial for His plans for your life. Amen? So, I want to—I have two verses today, and they're both a little different. They're different in, in the way that it's approaching husbands, but um, the first one is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 5. For your maker is your husband. His name is Yahweh, commander of angel armies. Your kinsman redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He has the title, Mighty God of all the earth. Of course, they're talking about Lord Jesus Christ, our heavenly bridegroom, our kinsman redeemer, the one who sacrificed himself to save us, to redeem us, to bring us into a full life with him. You know, that is a sacrificial kind of love. And if, as we have been reading in Song of Songs, the demonstration of the bridegroom and his feelings for the bride shows how much we should care about the other one. How much the husband should adore his wife as Christ adored the bride. We saw how he encouraged her, how he blessed her, how he told her how beautiful she was and how she blessed him when she worshiped him and how he missed her when she was away from him and how he longed to be with her. That is a promise that our heavenly bridegroom has made for each one of us. He desires that long lasting deep relationship we can still have that relationship while we're here on earth it will be fulfilled when we arrive in heaven but on this earth we can still build that relationship with the day when we go when we rise to heaven and we're with him we partake in the wedding supper of the Lamb, it's going to be a glorious, glorious, glorious time. But we need to learn how to be the bride and be the husband while we're still on this earth. Amen. The second verse I have for you is very familiar. It comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. And to the husband... You are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us, His bride. For He died for us, sacrificing Himself to make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the Word of God. This is such a beautiful description of how God made the husbands to be. Husbands are supposed to be providers and protectors of the family, of the wife and the family. Husbands are supposed to be the spiritual covering for their homes. Unfortunately, in this world today, there are not a lot of husbands that are stepping up and being this example that God gave us in these two verses. You know, God will always 
take care of his children. And if you are not married, if you're a widow, if you've never been married, the Lord Jesus is your husband. And he will do these things for you in the place of a natural husband. Why? Because he loves you. He would never leave you alone. He will always be your heavenly covering. You know, there are times when I have ministered to women whose husbands were not leading very fruitful lives and uh, were not following the Lord's path. And uh, it's very hurtful when a man doesn't take his place in the home that he's supposed to have because the wife seems to suffer and the children do as well. When you have harmony in the home, when you have peace in the home, it adds so much to everyone's inner healing and everyone's ability to, to function and to love and to reach out in love. But I would tell you that if you are in this situation and your husband is not in the place where he needs to be, I would just ask you, and this, and I have done this myself, Lord, I believe that my husband hears from you. I thank you that he has eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive everything you have for him. So speak to him, Father, and he will hear you and be obedient. Sometimes we know that it is, it's difficult in this world with all of the, the things going on, the pressures to, to work and earn money and, and sickness and disease and, and lack and everything going on. But we know that God is in control. God knows everything. And it's His desire and it's His design that He shares it with the husband first. He will give the wife confirmation but he will share it with the husband first. And the husband, as the wife's covering, will lead her into what the Lord has given her to do. Now, some people may say, well, you're speaking things over your husband that is your will. Well, that's not true. I'm not speaking anything over my husband that the Lord doesn't speak over him. When you declare that he's able to see and to hear and to experience the love of God inside of him, that is a God, God's will. That's his idea. And sometimes we just have to clear a path through all the clutter that gets in our life and let that person know, hey, I believe in you. You may have not made the right choices all the time in the past, but I believe in you, and I believe that God will use you as our covering. So tonight, I just want to tell you that God loves you, men of God, husbands of God. I just ask for you to rise up and take your rightly places. Read through those verses in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26. Sacrificial love. The love that prefers the other one. The love that will endure forever because God can live in that kind of love and in that relationship. Amen. Father God, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Father, I just thank you that we will be able to receive this word and break it down in our spirits that that each word that comes from the Word of God is truth. And as we soak it in, we're going to be able to pattern our life after your Word, which is not only helpful and healthy for us, but is pleasing to you. We just thank you and we bless you for this time together. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I look forward to sharing with the wife, for the wives next week. And the wife is also represented by the Bride of Christ. Good night and God bless.